hey, where's the best ice cream in the Northeast? We think it might just be Pennsylvania. Join the focus group as we take a trip through the Pennsylvania ice cream trail. Hashtag pursue your scoops. I hate hashtags, John. This is the focus group. It's the savvy side of nine to five. Listen. Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Laugh. Ah! and learn. Negotiation. This is what you do in business. This is The Focus Group with Tim Bennett. S-T-A-U-N-C-H. And John Nash. Keep your clothes looking neat and clean. We're all business. Except when we're not. Hey, we are The Focus Group, and for those of you who are fans of the show, look at our background that John picked out. That's that's that, that's Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. That is a real farm. It's We're in front of Fox Meadows Dairy Farm. Fox Meadows Dairy Farm. So uh, we're, we're in studio right now, but John and I, uh, halfway through the show, are going to hit the road in our Volkswagen All Tracks, and we're going to go on something called the Pennsylvania Ice Cream Trail. Pursue your scoops. And we're gonna Pursue hit, your scoops. Right, we're going to hit 12 creameries or dairies, dairies yeah. in, in two days and sample 12 different ice creams and if we get a little passport we can print out and we get mm -hmm. to stamps we get, we get them stamped we get a t-shirt and an ice cream scoop do we each get one yeah oh you we mean just, everybody you that fills the passport. passport oh this is so great and i just learned that the the pups may be joining us we might bring the dogs too the, get them a pup Trixie cup. and spike i think that would be a riot to have them on the ride i would love to have them along for so the we're going so we're taking this is one of our volkswagen road trips that we promised we we kind of found this one last minute we thought it'd be interesting what we love about it is it's very accessible for anybody in the northeast really because uh most of it is centered to the to the uh, eastern half of Pennsylvania, and uh, the PA Department of Agriculture put this together, and they call it cow to cone. <laughs> because so someone had to, to table. Because someone has to get paid to call it something, right? Cow to cone. You know, I feel cone. we're wearing our we're wearing our focus group shirts. Thank you, Brian at Admark 360. And Who's I do going to be going with us. And I do feel like we're either on an. Uh, we could almost be NFL or maybe more like Tour de France announcers. Well, let's not push it. <laughs> That's I almost feel like with my gray hair, I should have had your background. I think I'm blending into the, into the sky, aren't I, boys? You, you, could, fine. you could tell Tim likes the shirt more because he's worn it. It's a little more washed and oh, faded. It is. is it? John's is like bright black and yours is a little... Mine's I've worn this on the train. People want, you know, you got to use the brand to get people to see who you are. <laughs> it's a shame you guys can't join us on the road trip. Maybe next time. Yeah, yeah. that'd be fun. And, and be the worst shame is that we can't exactly save the ice cream for you. Because by the time it gets back to New York, it's just going to be soup, and then we'll refreeze it. They'll be like, okay. I think this background's hysterical. I, I, I feel like I'm going to do the crop report in a minute. Well, I think when we get to this actual creamery, we should take a picture yeah, of us definitely. Like in front of it with uh, Fox Meadows. With our, with our all tracks, of course. So uh, we're looking forward to it. We, in order to organize it, because John and I can sometimes be a yard sale in these, on these uh, road trips, and we never know what we're going to encounter, we're going to identify what we think was the best vanilla what we think was our favorite place, and then what we think was our favorite dessert each day, and then we're going to do a roundup, do a roundup which we'll, um, which you'll see here shortly. And all uh, new technology is being employed in the field. Tim a while ago turned me on to this uh, a, a YouTuber in Philadelphia. What was? Yeah, I forget her name. And it's a woman that walks around, and, and Tim said, "Hey, she does this thing with her phone where it's all like steady, smooth camera moves." So I bought one of these. Steadicam gimbal selfie stick things that we're going to be using to record our video in the field. John, that's going to be, you know, we'll I'll see. let you know how that goes. <laughs> well, last week's show, we also mentioned to you that uh, you could follow along because we'll post uh, on Monday and Tuesday, we'll post pictures of our trip and uh, whoever knows what happened. A little, our little, uh, Experiences are our, our, our photo journal. I don't know yeah, what you photo. I, 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 yeah, photo blog moments, moments, focus group moments. moments. Hey, but it's the last week of summer. Can you believe it? No, and you know, the strangely, I said to friends that were visiting the other day, and we all commented on the fact that in the dead of winter, you're locked into your home because you don't want to go outside. In the dead of summer, it depends on where you're at, but here in the Northeast, we were locked inside because of 90 degree and a plus, plus the humidity. It's just, it was kind of miserable in a way. Very miserable. It wasn't a summer that um, I remember weather-wise as being like this in a long time. I don't remember having three or four heat waves. I don't remember all this tropical stuff going on, but miserable. you know what? I'm not gonna complain, even though I sound like I'm complaining, <laughs> because in February, like let's say February 10th, it might be two degrees 
and you're going to say, boy, I wish it was 90 degrees with high humidity. I'll take that. Any, you I know like the it fall, is. though, but I, uh, you and I have talked. Oh, I like September, fall and spring. October. Fall and spring. Yeah. I mentioned this on, hey, thank you for those of you who are tuning in to our TFG Unbuttoned every Tuesday. And I mentioned this on, the, on our podcast there. But it happened again to me today, and I, I just I don't know if anyone else is experiencing this, so I want to mention it here too. That Chewy.com commercial for ding the dong. dogs. Ding oh dong. my god, this morning that thing was on <laughs> MSNBC nonstop. And my dogs, every time they ding dong, they're running to the door. They have it down. They must have done studies to know that that's gonna get a dog that's owner's the doorbell. I know it's a Chewy commercial because that doorbell hits and they're on it. They run to the door. Who's there? Ding dong. So if any of you else are experiencing that, let us know. I think it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's a brilliant marketing ploy. Hey, but you know, the other thing we, we didn't do this year, I think we did it last year, was we always made resolutions for the fall. Because while everybody looks at New Year's and says, oh, it's the new year, we've got to make resolutions, you and I always pegged resolution time to be like, you're back from the summer, let's get something done. Well, right? Should we do that in the next week's show then? Maybe that'll maybe, be... Maybe the first week of the, of the new talk. September of the month will be a shop talk on what we plan to get done. So instead of going back to school, we'll have a rebirth. <laughs> a reinvention. A reinvention. So what caught your eye, Mr. Nash? What caught your eye? Here's what Tim and John found. Okay, this first one's a quick one. Oh, and I should note to everybody that Tim, yes, uh, when we were doing the, the setup on our notes, Tim and I landed on the same caught our eye. I think within minutes of each other, we had picked this one. So he let me do it, but you had found it as well. This first one, though, comes to us from a gallery. Uh, you know, it's, it's this whole thing where people interact with art. And, you know, we've had stories on here before where sculptures are broken. People break off something from a statue. They touch a painting. Well, in this case, a man accidentally fell into a hole. <laughs> so he Fell into a hole. There's an art, uh, an optical illusion made by the famed British artist Anish Kapoor proved a little too convincing when a man fell into a large hole the artist painted with black pigment to look like a flat circle. So uh, what we're showing, if, if, you're not list, if you're not watching the video, is that it looks like a, just a circle painted on a floor in black, but it's actually an eight-foot pit deep pit. That's very dangerous, don't you think? Yeah. It's unclear exactly how the reportedly 60-year-old Italian gentleman wound up tumbling into the eight-foot pit, especially considering there are caution signs set all around the piece, not to mention a staffer tasked with keeping visitors safe. <laughs> the man was hospitalized after the fall, but he's doing okay. So the artwork is supposed to evoke this notion of staring into the void, you know, because it's so black and there's a special paint that's used to make... The, I can't believe that's an eight-foot pit. But it looks like a, a it looks like one of those acme circles they used to throw in front of Wile, Wile E. Coyote would throw in front of the road runner and beep beep and he'd fall you know he'd try to this go goes in. to show to me any idiot can be an artist <laughs> I can make a hole well you know that's a meta idea I think at the very baseline any gallery goer can be a fool and step into a piece of art and hurt well, look themselves. at us we're in the hole John <laughs> ah, and we go to oblivion <laughs> nicely done John nicely done that's yeah. I mean, would, do you consider that art? I do, yeah. Because it's a contemplative. It's a hole. <laughs> a hole in the floor. Painted to look like a two-dimensional thing. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a road cone, and I'm going to paint it white, and I'm going to set it on the floor, and I'm going to call it the dunce cap, and that's going to be art. And someone will buy it for $1,500. Let's hope. And let, let's hope. And let's Put hope on that Etsy. you're... Etsy? Is it SD? SD? Etsy? Etsy. Or you could do Artsy, which I is... Get, I get wound up on this stuff. All right. So this, this one you're not going to get wound up with because you, you, you found this one as well. Animal crackers, one of my favorite snacks as a kid. And as an adult, too, by the way. I love animal crackers. Uh, got some vanilla ice cream. They're fantastic. Stick them in there. Uh, they changed the look of their box. So apparently Mond uh, Mondelez has been the subject of a campaign by PETA, or PETA. Is it PETA? PETA. PETA. <laughs> People for the Ethical Treatment, Treatment of, of Animals. Animals. You, know <laughs> that, you know that one it's really well. the Hamptons, John. <laughs> they've been, they've been um, trying to get Mondelez to change the box for a while because the old box uh, used to show the animals in cages because these animal crackers were actually used as a marketing ploy for Ringling Brothers, Barnum, Barnum and Bailey, Bailey right? Barnum's animals. So they would show the Barnum animals. In fact, that's Barnum Animal Crackers. It's still called that, even though the zoo no longer, the uh, Barnum Circus ceased to exist in 2017. So PETA did succeed in doing this, and Mondelez agreed that it would be better to show the animals running in free range. And so there is a new box now. And uh, they're all happily, I mean, you know, I think that. I actually like the design, frankly. The cage thing did feel a little old fashioned to me, you know. 
Do you mind? This, do you mind the? Uh... I threw a softball to Peter. <laughs> Shut him up. <laughs> get him Put out the of the cages. We, got, we, gotta get a new, we have to do a new print anyway because the, the dyes have run out. So, so the uh, Nabisco or Mondelez, I guess, has been making Barnum's Animal Crackers since 1902. And it has redesigned the boxes before, but only for limited special time editions. And apparently the box in Canada has been different for many, many years now, which was a surprise. What if the Canadians had a cage? I don't know about that. They didn't say. They just said the company, they said Canadian boxes already had a different design and aren't affected by this new, this new switch. So there you go. New. I, do, I mean, they did a nice job with it. It still yeah. looks like it's still identifiable as the Barnum Animal Crackers. But totally. Yeah. I don't know. Are you a PETA fan? Well, I leather. used to get the phone calls from you all the time when you were doing any shoot that you were on. Oh my God. I remember there was one you were doing where snake, uh, snake lobby, a, a, or a deer would, Bunny. or deer was supposed to stop in the road and then cross the road, and they were like, "Is that deer? You know, are you handling that correctly?" And just crazy. Well, it was supposed stuff. to be a moose, but the moose wasn't available. There's only one moose allowed to work in Hollywood. You know, I think I think I was after doing Northern Exposure at the time. Were you on, were you with the brand when they did a? Um, dealers are known for doing what are they tent sales? What do they call those? The tent, sale tent sales. Or? So I think there was a, a Subaru ad. I, I want to say it was right around the time you may or may not have been with the brand where a chimpanzee was involved, like a monkey. Oh, no, I don't think I was involved. And it was like a, a, a train monkey, and he, and he was holding some guy's hand, and it was like a tent sale event for Subaru or something. Well, apparently, I was talking to someone from the brand from Subaru, and they're like, oh, yeah, 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 we got PETA went all over us. They, they pulled the ad. Yeah. Even though it was a trained and had an animal handler you know they pulled the ad you can't we had a bunny it. ad and the kid released the bunny into the it was a science project thing or whatever and the kid released the bunny into the wild which you're not supposed to do but it was what at the time everyone thought was a heartwarming spot so peter protested that we had one where a car drove into a pit full of snakes like snake cages. oh they must have gone crazy with the snakes oh, went nuts but even even somebody who was heavy the, the fat person's lobby went after us said why are all the villains heavy <laughs> You know, it's basically like Seinfeld said. Mm -hmm. I mean, he said it in reference to doing college campus uh, comedy tours, but you can't do anything anymore. Yeah, you can't, you're not allowed to do anything. You know, unless I think it's going to revert to almost Charlie Chaplin style pantomime silent movie humor where you could show someone getting a pie in the face. But then I'm sure the person who got the pie in the face, like, how dare these people always get their pie, the, you know, that kind of person always gets a pie in their face or something like that. was like, like, like that. a couple of weeks ago on the MTV, we didn't talk about it, but on the MTV, I think it was the MTV Music Awards. The VMAs. Which, yeah, which I don't think anyone watches, but apparently Madonna made some comment. Um, a tribute Referencing to Aretha. Yep. Aretha Franklin. It wasn't a tribute. Supposedly, that's what she said. She was just referencing the fact of her body of work and how what an influence she was. But everybody got upset that Madonna made it about her. They said, but again, people get so darn sensitive about stuff. I don't know. Yep. So. What caught your eye? Well, since you had stolen the one I had, this one came See, to me. See, I told you earlier. I was I, we we coordinated. I was okay. You can have it, John. But now I stole this it. This one came from Richard, and so because you took the good one, now we got something that's a little. Yes, Iceland really has launched a beer made with whale testicles. This see, this tops the animal crackers, I tops think. The animal crackers. So they so there's a beer in Iceland that they just came out with, and I watched it on. I watched the video. I'm trying to say it correctly, but the Stedja, I think, is the way they say a brewery, in Iceland for something they call the Thorablot Festival, which is, sounds similar to our Thanksgiving. It's a midwinter sort of festival where they have traditional foods. However, very different from us. Their traditional foods are ram's testicle, rotten shark, and soured whale fat. These are things that they ate. These are things that they ate. Their, their ancestors ate. So why not make some cheap dung smoked whale balls and put it in beer? So they took whale testicle. And there's a picture if you're watching. It's a big testicle. And, uh, That's a whale testicle? Yeah. That's a fin whale. So there's a, there's a group called Vlavler. I can't say it. It's all, all the, uh, Icelandic. But this brewery worked with this company that's allowed to get 150 whales a year. One, okay. And so there, but people are upset because these whales could live to 90. So PETA and other groups are upset be saying that you shouldn't kill these whales and use them for exploitation by doing something as ridiculous as a uh, whale infused uh, whale testicle infused beer but anyway they've done it because they said the whales are dead anyway so um 
Well, anyway, wait. Well, anyway, they've done it. They've done it. Because the whales are dead. Well, anyway. So this other group takes it and they, they use other whale byproducts okay. and oils or whatever. So nobody was using the testicle. So why not put it in a vat of beer? So they put one testicle in each vat of beer. It's a special limited edition. And uh, the beer is 5.2% alcohol. And uh, they, they take, they, first they take, they take the whale testicle and they put it in a smoker with sheep dung. And they said it makes it very smoky. Sheep dung? Sheep dung. Ugh. So the giant whale testicle weighs between 15 to 18 pounds. You use one testicle per batch. It's about the size of a basketball. Yeah. Anyway, looks got, delicious. Got me to not say anything. But apparently, people don't <laughs> like the taste so much. It's just got acquired taste. This tastes a little smoky. But they said that... I uh, didn't say it tastes like chicken. Tastes but. Like chicken. <laughs> but they said that uh, whale meat is low in fat. And so they say that this beer is healthy. And their ancestors, presumably the Vikings, were not very particular, and they didn't fuss about consuming sex organs of sea creatures. <laughs> the Vikings were not fussy. <laughs> they weren't fussy eaters, right? So they got a lot of emails and complaints, but... Uh, they were gluten-free. They said a lot of the activists were mostly from abroad. They didn't understand the Icelandic traditions. Anyway, if you want to try the beer, they did one last year, too, and they used... Uh, some other parts of the whale. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That Not means this particular beer is like a limited edition batch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this year was the year they this decided. This year they did testicles. Next year they could use eyeballs of squid, or could, I'm making it up, but yeah. No, the the uh, the year before they used something called um, whale meal. Mm, ew. That yeah. must be like ground up something, right? They said this is the first time they've used whale. So, if you're interested, <laughs> I don't know if you, you'll probably buy it here in New York City. I bet you could find it here. It's called it's it's H V A L U R or something like that. So that's what I am. There you go. Well, it's 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 uh, it's it's not up there with animal crackers in terms of it's like oh look they changed the box. This is I'm still caught on the whole idea of a testicle the, the size of a basketball. Probably but. not good to mix with our ice cream tour. No. no. Well, imagine doing a float. You could do a. <laughs> Smoked sheep dung whale testicle float a little bit. I see, I see, I see potential for Rehoboth. Kids run screaming. <laughs> Business birthday. Everyone does celebrity birthday greetings, but the Focus Group is the only show in the universe that celebrates business birthdays. Do you know Brian Chesky? Brian Joseph Chesky, born April or April, born August 29th, 1981. He's 37 years old today. You know who he is? Well, I do well, because I, 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 I'm not going to say because I looked through the deck. Entrepreneur, yeah, but I didn't know who he was until I, I didn't either. Co-founded the hospitality exchange service Airbnb. He's the CEO of the company. He was uh, named one of Time Magazine's most top 100 most influential people. I love his little quote there. Did you read that one, John? John? Yeah, it says anybody can build a global company, and then he's got that kind of a weird smile on his face. Like well, I, you would too if you're a billionaire. It's kind of a. Like, I don't know, how would you look at, I don't know, I don't feel that's a sincere smile. What do you guys think? A little creepy. I don't know, yeah, kind of looks like he's on drugs or something. <laughs> yeah, there's something lopsided. I, I don't know, I don't mean to nitpick, but I, I just... You don't find him handsome? Uh, no, okay. no, I'm, I'm sure he is. But... Yeah, he liked to draw as a child. He decided to go to the Rhode Island School of Design, or otherwise known as RISD. He received his bachelor's there in industrial design in 2004. And he met some guy there named Joe Gebbia, and they both co-founded Airbnb. They had moved out to San Francisco, and they couldn't afford the rent one month. As I, this is a known story, yeah. So in October 07, the Industrial Design Society was hosting a conference. So they decided, since they couldn't afford rent, that they would rent out their uh, apartment. And they went out and got some air mattresses and advertised air bed and breakfast. And they had three guests stay their first night. And, of course, the rest is history. In 2008, they went looking for seed money, and they got the attention. I thought this was interesting. They, they um, In order to draw attention to themselves, they created a special edition cereal called Obama O's and Captain McCain's. Did you know that? <laughs> no. <laughs> so it was based on the presidential candidates, and uh, they got the attention of Y Combinator, which was a... Um, uh, venture capital. Venture firm. capital. Yeah. So they accepted Airbnb into its seed funding group. Fast forward ahead, in 2015, they were one of the major sponsors of the 2016 Summer Olympics. They had more than 120,000 people stay in Airbnbs for the uh, FIFA uh, World Cup in 2014. 
And uh, as of 2016, it was their capital valuation or Airbnb's valuation was $20 billion. Not a bad idea, right? He joined Buffett, Gates, and uh, the rest of them and the Billionaires Club that he's going to give a majority of his wealth away, which I think is nice. Very good. He, uh, he's got all kinds of other, other prizes. He's dating Alyssa Patel. I don't know if they're still together. She's an artist they met on Tinder. Swipe. And that's it. He swiped right. I don't know. I guess he met, you know, they met on Tinder. I think when you're that wealthy, do you get on the Tinders? It's however you do it. I mean, I would think that... You boys use those apps? Well, no, what that they, why would they? No, I mean, John's yeah. getting married. We've been in long relationships, but would we? Would did you, you meet? Did you meet on, on an app? No. Uh, no, no. We met in school ten Work. years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Work. My the friend old, uses them. Does he? Yeah. If I was single, it seems like a pretty convenient way. Easy, huh? Yeah. yeah he immediately was texting with five girls and then was going out on two dates a week, kind of thing. Wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. Still mm -hmm. weird though. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I like the old-fashioned way of meeting, like running into somebody like, oh, that could be the person. I want person. to see they're not a hatchet murderer. That was our business birthday. And then uh, before we hit the road, John, as everybody knows, our friends at Deep Discount have been a supporter of us here on the Focus Group. They've got a special going on now for documentaries and special interests. Your favorite category. Great docs and special yep. interest titles. So um, I picked something that I think you and I should have done. This is the show that I would have done. It's a, um, it's called How the States Got Their Shapes. You Documentary. Know, have you heard of it? The minute I saw you put this in the deck, I kind of laughed because I remember you mentioned this to me. You know, because it's all about territory and... It's all about language, territory, culture, how the different states in the, uh, in the United States got their shapes. And uh, I always laughed about it because we had a friend who went to China to teach. And her first question, she, she had all these Chinese students. And she said, do you have any questions about the United States? And she said the first question in every class was, how come some states are got squiggly lines, lines and some out west are squares? Just like boxes, yeah. And so I laughed about this because he, he visits that, how boundaries were set, how states were developed, um, how language had changed, how accents were developed. And it was just initially supposed to be a, uh, a single show on the History Channel. It ended up being a series, and there's two, two different seasons. Um, I picked season one, but there's also a season two, which digs more into it. But what I love is, um, is the host, Brian Unger. He does commentary from behind the wheel as he drives from location to location. I thought this would have been the perfect thing for you, you and I. I yeah to do as we've done our road trips and done some of this stuff. So Another missed opportunity. Another missed opportunity, but it's a great price. You can get it at deep discount for under $25. So. And I picked from the documentary and special interest section sale. It's one of our favorites because you and I could go in there and find tons. Okay. Of, actually, frankly, the deep discount side, it's like a rabbit hole to me anyway. I get in there and I start clicking around. Uh, one of my favorite movies about the Apollo space program is actually about one of the last men that actually walked on the moon. And the, and the movie is called The Last Man on the Moon, and it features Gene Cernan, who last stepped on the moon in December of 1972, uh, fulfilling a lifelong dream of doing so. And uh, basically, the movie is reminiscence, interviews, memories of that experience, because by the time he actually went to the moon, America was actually moving on from the Apollo program. It wasn't this... We used to be glued. Remember the first missions? We, everybody watched those so, launches. So, aside from the first folks that were up there, yeah, he was one of the last or the last. He, I think he was the last person to be to have. What was what was the, what was the mission? Uh, by that time, it was purely geological. Yeah. They were they had the moon car. They were picking up samples and. Um, so the Blu-ray version of this movie has been out on DVD for a few years, but the Blu-ray version includes some new interviews with him and some behind-the-scenes featurettes about Cape Canaveral and a bunch of other things. And also, um, have you seen this? Yeah, I did. I did, so I, and I love it. And especially when he talks about how it changed his life in terms of his notoriety and the fact that there's a very limited number of people on the earth who have walked on the moon and and it's shrinking <laughs> well, there's some talk i don't know if it's true or not but there's some talk that the the russians have reactivated wanting to go there and the chinese of course are threatening to go to there to the moon so I, I do you think they'll do it i mean i, I don't know if it's the closest body in the solar system to us and uh, we did it with tin cans tin foil and an abacus when you think about it compared to what we our phones could do more than what they i'm always shocked when you and i went to that air and space museum when they said that the cell phone that we have in our hands is more technology than what they went to the moon with what did they say it was like 10 or 100 times more powerful than the little computer they had whatever they called that computer Not me. so yeah
yeah, uh, last, Mon last Man on the Moon. Check it out on Blu-ray. It's available at deep discount. And the movie this week, the release this week, is a movie that I would like to see. It's called Book Club, or The Book Club. And it features Diane Keaton, Jane Fonda, Candace Bergen, and Mary Steenburgen. So it's a quartet of famous <laughs> comedic actresses, right? Yeah. Why are you laughing? I mean, I just, you know, just those those four together. The only one missing is Cher. <laughs> right? you're, you're right, though. I would. I, I love Dan Keaton. Jane Fonda, I, I've been watching. Um, she's on a uh, the Netflix show. Is that Frankie and Gracie? Frankie. So it's fun to see. I love when they could put these actresses uh, in a movie and, and have some magic happen. So it's the book club on Blu-ray. It's available at Deep Discount. That's the release this week. So to recap, um, for the documentary and special interest uh, sale, go to visit Deep Discount by getting there, or get it there through our website, focusgroupradio.com. Click on the Deep Discount logo and start shopping away. We like getting credit for that. So Tim picked How the States Got Their Shapes. Yeah. I'm a big fan of this movie, The Last Man on the Moon. It's about the, uh, the last man on the moon, Gene Cernan. And the movie released this week is Book Club on Blu-ray. What do we say, Garrett? Thanks, Deep Discount. All right, folks, we're going to take a very quick break. And when we return, we will be possibly in front of the real version of this. Exactly. Maybe doing our, our maybe we're, but we're, all, we're on the road. We might have Trixie Spike. We'll have Brian from Admark 360 with us. And it's the Pursue Your Scoops ice cream tour of Pennsylvania. We dine to get all the stamps because I want a T-shirt and I want an ice cream scoop. Ice cream scoop. There you go. Oh, and look at a little thing we made there for our trip. A little, little panel. Pursue your scoops, a focus group road trick with the VW All Track Wagon. All right, so stay with us. Uh, when we return, you'll see us from the road in Pennsylvania. Brought to you by Volkswagen. Visit VW.com to learn more. Now, back to the Focus Group with Tim and John. Glamour today is nothing but a tight skirt, loose hips, and wet lips. An entertaining look at the world of business. Make it work. Make it work. Make it, make it, make it work. 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 Hey, welcome back to the Focus Group. As promised, Tim Bennett here with my good friend and co-host, John Nash. And uh, leave it to the Focus Group to pick one of the hottest days, I think the hottest heat wave of the season, to do our Pursue Your Scoops, Volkswagen, All Track, Focus Group Ice Cream Trail through Pennsylvania Road Tour. Is that is that the right 2018. way? 2018. 2018. Just, just to add as many words as possible <laughs> to the whole equation. And for right? those of you who have followed our road trips over the years, <laughs> when we did, John and I did a road trip, gosh, probably five years ago, six years ago for Volkswagen Beetle. And that was averaged through from Philadelphia through to Las Vegas. And I think it was about 100 or 105 110. every day. We were in a heat dome. And uh, so today we just finished day one uh, here in Pennsylvania. And it was close to 100. And tomorrow promises to be 105, at least with the index. So a good time to test out the Volkswagen All Track as well as to uh, do this Pursue Your Scoops ice cream tour. And uh, John and I and our friend Brian from Admark 360 uh, found this road trip that the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture had put together, and there were 12 locations. And so John and I talked about it and thought, let's try to do six and first, six. First, first, props to Tim for a master mapping job. Both days were about 204 to 230 miles. You couldn't avoid getting it perfect, but Tim did a darn good job because he figured out the two of the dairies were owned by the Amish, as Amish, your dad says, or, the or Amish. The, the Amish. And, <laughs> and they were closed on Monday. <laughs> of course, they're closed on Monday. Who knew? But a uh, good thing I checked the night before. The one thing I am going to see if John can do for the second day is John seemed to use the navigation uh, on his phone <laughs> versus using the navigation on the all track, which I use all the time. So I'm convinced, John, that tomorrow we're going to try the navigation on the all track. Uh, uh, John's a creature of habit, for many of you know John, and that's what he wants to do, and that's what he wants to use, and that's what he knows. So that's what he did. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so we, we took off here at about uh, 1030 this morning, and uh, we went to a, a, our very first stop was in Lansdale, Pennsylvania, which isn't that far outside of Philadelphia. It's probably 25, 30 miles outside of Philly, a place called Freddie Hill Farm. We lucked out. We totally lucked out. Freddie Hill Farms, the first person that Tim and Brian met when they got out of the car because I was fiddling with a, this thing we bought. And by the way, we'll be cutting during our talk to still images and video that we took of each of the dairies and the end of the road trip. But Tim met the owner of Freddie Hill Farm. I think his name Nancy. Her name was Nancy. Well, she actually spotted us taking pictures. John, yep. had, John had the camera out and she said, are you guys on the ice cream tour? 
are the ice cream trail? And we said, yeah, we are. And who are you? And she told us she was Nancy and did not steer us wrong. She led us to some great ice cream that, uh, that Freddie Hill Farm had. And that was, uh, that was our first stop, which um, proved to be a good one. Freddie Hill also had a miniature golf course, which we well, would have liked to have availed <laughs> ourselves of. Putt-putt, as we say. I would have liked to have done it, but we didn't. But <laughs> We had no so time for that. So at Freddie Hill... Are we going to do favorite uh, stuff later? Or? I think what um, I, th I think let's let's maybe let's just go quick about where we went, and yeah. then we can say okay. what we liked for the day. And then after we're going to take a break and do our come back for our second day, John and I will give our overall favorites. Yeah. I think so. The second uh, dairy after that was called Mary Mead Farm, and that was out in Lansdale, same area. In fact, yeah. I think it was only. 20 minutes or it, it was, was pretty like two it was, miles it was pretty close, close to where we were yeah. at the first one and that was a very different locale enjoyable nonetheless next place next place we went to was crystal springs and i don't have my note in front of me but you could probably say where that was located. Uh, snacksville <laughs> yes snacksville you know the <laughs> funny thing about pennsylvania these places are not it's a very accessible ice cream tour if you live <laughs> in the northeast whether you're coming up from maryland or down from new york or connecticut or jersey it's very accessible but it's funny these little towns in pennsylvania yeah. these are all independent dairy farms and that was why they uh why they were developed so that place was called crystal spring and the, the odd thing there, I think odd thing, was we had a mint chip because uh, Bob had told Bob's, yep. uh, John's husband, said, "Try you got to try mint chocolate chip. I thought it tasted like licorice. Yeah, and it was the, weird. And the, they said something about it. They said something about the flavor. Well, she went back and said, no, it's just fresh mint. So maybe you had just, ne just never had fresh mint ice cream before. The next one up was uh, Wehar Farms. Now, was Wehar the... Um, it was Jake and Morgan. Okay, who, yeah, and that was, With was the, that the Lonnie? Blueberry buckle. Yeah, okay. So Lolly. We, yeah. Lolly. So apparently, one of the women who helped, or one of the f uh, dairy farmers who helped pull together the Pursue Your Scoops tour was Lolly, and she's one of the owners of Wehar Farms. And when we were there, we asked this guy, Jake, who must have been like seven foot ten, <laughs> big guy, and he, we asked him what his favorite flavor was, and it was blueberry buckle. buckle. Blueberry buckle. Bu right. Blueberry buckle. And it turned out to be our favorite from that particular. Uh, dairy, and that was out in Benville, Pennsylvania. Well, it was the favorite of John and <laughs> Brian. Brian, but my favorite <laughs> was something I'd never ever seen before. And as a kid, I used to love the gum called tea berry, which is really a wintergreen berry that grows on the on the East Coast. But it's a it's a wintergreen flavor. And it, as a kid, you might remember the old gum from the sixties yeah. came in kind oh, of a yeah, pink yeah, pack. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And so I had the tea berry ice cream, and I thought that was great. <laughs> And so from Way, uh, Wayhar Farms, we then went to Fox Meadows Creamery. Now, first half of our show, uh, Tim and I were in the studio, and behind us was a picture of some silos, a red barn, a green cornfield. That was actually Fox Meadows Creamery. And um, I'm going to switch to some video that I took, a little panoramic shot. It was as beautiful as the backdrop we were sitting in front of. However, um, it... it it was a commercial enterprise, right? Yeah. I don't was, know how it, else to put it. They, it, they, it was beautifully done. The inside well appointed. was not, well appointed, a nice gift shop, very polite staff. Uh, there was a woman there named Paige and Leanna. I think that it helped us. They had something called the baked fox, which John got, which was a like a, a kind of a melted um, chocolate cake or brownie with vanilla ice cream. But um, it was all very good, but it, it, it was what you would expect. I, I guess as a as a commercial actually enterprise. it was yeah and uh, the last one we did at, at that uh, on that day on today <laughs> is uh, the Coventry Parlor at Laurel Locks and that was in Pottstown, PA, which is probably about thirty miles away from where Tim right. is at where we're at right now. That would be considered probably a Philadelphia Philadelphia suburb. And Brian had his his niece and uh, her husband and the the and two his kids. Great niece and great niece. They right. just had their first day of school and I think it's first grade in kindergarten was the. So we treated the kids to ice cream. They loved us to death. Well, they loved the Milky Way. They, they had the, the Milky, Milky, Way Milky Way ice cream, ice cream cone. Yeah. And we got some vanilla soft serve there. And uh, one thing we both found out on this trip, I didn't know, and I've known Brian forever, he's a berry guy. He wants a berry-flavored berry, ice yeah. cream. Every time we went somewhere, it had to be a raspberry or a cherry or some sort of <laughs> berry thing. Yeah. So that was... Uh, that was the first day. It was the the car did great. We had uh, we went 208 miles. Yep. I think we got 33 miles per gallon. As we <laughs> said, it was very hot. We forgot the you know one of my the bogeyman for me is the fuel light. The fuel light came. Oh on. gosh! But it was an interesting tug of war. No one freaked out. But we were in an area where we had not seen gas stations for a while, and we were going to get on the PA Turnpike. 
And Tim thought about it for a second, and he said, you know, the last time I missed, missed an exit on the turnpike, it was 20 minutes to the next 20 one. miles. 20 miles. To the next. The car was telling us we had a 15 to 25 yeah. miles of gas. You know, it could be more. Tim has always taught me it's more. But we ended, Tim goes, why don't you get off here? We found a Speedway gas station. You know, we've teased, I, if you watch our all-track review from two years ago when we were out west, I teased John all about the, time. the light went on and it was panic ensued and all his, his brother-in-law, Steve, loved that whole thing. John will say he didn't panic, but I did watch John's behavior because I was sitting in the passenger seat. And though he says he didn't panic and he was putting on an air of no worries, he kept hitting the button and seeing it go down from 25 to, to 15. 20 to 15. I'm thinking, okay, he's nervous about the gas. And he's probably right. There, we were in a very rural area, and there were a lot of gas stations that were closed. Yeah. So uh, we did. We did go find one, <laughs> which we was kind of funny. Gas. Yeah. So that that was. So the first day was a success. We were beat though, and we ate a lot of ice cream. Brian was trying to figure out how many calories he thought we had. We had way too much. He lowballed. Brian lowballed like seven hundred calories. We had yeah. to be over fifteen hundred. I. I. And we're just. And we didn't really. We we got little scoops that we shared, but you know, after six of these dairies, now. Do you want to pick our favorite for the day, for today, or for the whole? Um, yeah, yeah. Why don't we pick? Why don't we? Why don't we pick it at the end? All right, okay. we'll, we'll pick our favorite. So after, well, you want to take us to break? Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> we had this timed out. You know, we we're professionals. We know what we're doing. Here, by the way, is Tim's prep sheet. There's the prep sheet. Here, here's our, here's there's our passport. Our, yeah. Oh, we had to get stamped at every place. That was the oh, deal. and so, so yeah. Check this out. Stamp. I I may do a a, a close up of this uh, cutaway to it, but. We thought the stamp for every dairy was going to be different. Right. But it was the same stamp. It was the Keystone PA Keystone logo. PA. It'd be we like felt if you like having the one go, ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk <laughs> You're thinking it's going to be like if you're yeah. in Europe and every country stamps you something, something different. different. But it was, uh, that was, it was fun. And we've also posted pictures on Facebook. So if you go to focusgroupradio.com and listen to Pat, we got loud and clear. Did you see what your friend Pat posted what after I say? posted the pictures from today? He put uh, he he did he did a video of how to um, lose belly fat. <laughs> so so thanks Pat. Thanks Pat. Yeah, we love you. <laughs> so. Hey, all right, we're uh, going to take a really quick break here. When we return, we're going to wrap up. Um, we'll we'll be done with day two when we return. Actually, we'll be getting in the car tomorrow morning and doing day two. So when we come back, um, we'll be finished with that, and we're going to run through the dairies that we stopped at, and also pick our favorite two, one from each day and tell you some of the flavors that we actually thought were the best that we had on the trip. So it's the focus group. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this quick break. Brought to you by Volkswagen. Visit VW.com to learn more. You're listening to The Focus Group. I said to my girlfriend just the other day, monsters are interesting, I said. With Tim Bennett and John Nash. And I'll bet you meet a lot of interesting people, too. Hey, welcome back to The Focus Group. It's day two of our Pursue Your Scoops Pennsylvania Ice Cream Trail tour with the Volkswagen All Track. And uh, it is hot, and we're in the same clothes. And I said to John, I think we're going to stink. But John insisted that we wear our branding. So we had to wear our shirts again. So we didn't have time. Wait, Carol, After Merrill. last night, we didn't do any laundry. We just had some salads and crashed because we were so kind of ice creamed out. But Boy, was I glad for the salad. <laughs> Tim ordered from a great restaurant. We're, we're in Tim's neighborhood, by the way. And he ordered from a great, what did you call it, KJ's? KJ's. KJ's. We got these chicken Caesar Delicious salads. Delicious, because after, <laughs> we, we did not, we had a lot of ice cream. Yeah. I, we, oh, this morning, we were almost like, I don't know if we could do it, <laughs> but we did it, and it was a lot of fun. So, uh, And by the way, if you want to check out some pictures, we took some great shots along the way. So if you go to focusgroupradio.com, um, well, no, actually, if you go to focusgroupradio.com, you'll be able to see all of our shows as well as this one. But if you go to our Facebook page, which is Focus Group Radio, we have all the, a, a photo blog there of the two days of our trip plus some of the pictures and the, and the uh, ice cream that we tested along the way. So today we did the, yesterday we did six, uh, six of the creameries and dairies, independent dairies that the uh, Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture put together for this tour of independent uh, dairy farms. And today we did the other six. <laughs> and we did cross a little bit. Pots we crossed because as you mentioned, yeah. some things were closed. So yeah. the, the, our first stop we went to was a place called Lap, was wow. it Lap Valley? Lap 
Valley Farm. Lab Valley yeah. Farm and New Holland, PA. And which it, is right near Blue Ball, PA, <laughs> which is also near Bird in Hand and also near Intercourse. And for all of you that <laughs> these are, are real towns, folks. These are all real towns, but they all had very innocent reasons why they were named that. For instance, Blue Ball was named that way because in the 1700s there was a hotel there and the person, the proprietor, didn't have a sign. He put out a blue ball. And so they called the town Blue Ball after the inn that was there. And Intercourse was actually the end of a race course, and it was supposed to be Intercourse, intercourse and it yeah. became Intercourse. So there's uh, as, as much as we'd like to think differently, that's at least that's what we read. That's what we yeah, about. So this Lap Valley Farm was owned by the Amish. <laughs> Amish. Tim's dad says Amish. I, and now and I think I'm, he does it as a joke. Of course he does. And now I'm stuck saying it, because I and they're not going to mind. It was the Amish, and... It was a spectacular farm. Magnificent. It was so clean and neat. They had baby cows you could go up to and yeah. pet. I, I met two farm kitties. One was very friendly. Farm kitty. Uh, they had regular cows that were walking around, but the buildings were great. It looked like you're in the middle of a dairy Way farm. off the beaten path. And the amount of people that know that this dairy is there that drive into the barn and there's a drive through and we're getting fresh milk and eggs. It was... It, you know, served by one of the the women there. Her a name drive is through. You're not. You, you right. said drive through, right? They came in. They they come to a window and they get a Two gallon gallons of milk, of milk or, or whatever. And and she was. And we we kind of thought initially she was just in costume, but she really was a a, a, a an Amish person that worked there. Very pleasant. And very her fun. name was Marianne, and we laughed because I wanted to buy some butter and buy some cheese. Uh, cheese. And she just kind of shook her head and she said, "Well, that's not ours because all of our cream that we use in the summer." is done for ice cream. All the cream from the cows is for ice cream. If you want to get butter that we do and, and mm -hmm. so forth, come back in the fall. As John said, you could eat off the driveway. It, it was, was so clean, clean and so beautiful. pristine beautiful. and just gorgeous. It was it was magnificent. We don't want to preface too much. <laughs> but you'll show you'll show that. <laughs> you'll, you'll see some of the So where did we head next took. to after that? Uh, next we went to the milk house the milk house at Oregon Dairy. Um in Oregon City, wasn't it called Oregon City too? It's or? in Lidditz. Lidditz, that's Lidditz, what it was. Okay. PA. I'm gonna just put it this way. It's kind of like a key food attached to a ice cream bar. I was gonna say, if you're familiar with the Stu Leonard's, yeah, it's Stu Leonard's, Stu exactly Leonard's, which a lot of people like have Leonard's. in the Northeast. I don't know if there's other places. Yeah, we places. had one in Yonkers. But it was very much like that. It certainly was. Um, well run, but it was more of a kind of a destination, destination family. Gift and, shop, and there are a lot of kids. Yeah, kids were playing outside. They had this really great uh, slide and cows. You could like fake cows. You could play there. But we tried to find the ice cream, and we ended up in a supermarket that was really the size of like a, right. a giant or a key food. To take your pick. And we were like, eh, okay. And so uh, we didn't stay there too long. And we, we had to ask, actually, you're right. I think we liked the butter pecan that was there. Yeah, but that was a stretch. So then we yeah. went from there to York, PA, and the, the dairy was called the Perry Dell Farm Dairy. And um, I think that was the furthest out we went. Yeah, it was quite a distance from, and quite a distance from Philadelphia. Or from It would be the farthest one out the It was the furthest the north and west yeah. that we went. And I'm not sure... It was actually worth the trip. It's a long ride. For a pretzel. <laughs> now, we, we wanted to get all our stamps because we want the ice cream well, scoop we, and the shirt. We didn't realize we could have had someone just do us a double. <laughs> yeah, they could but, have done that. Yeah, that place was, um, it was a long ride and, uh, and it was a hot day. Yeah. So what was our next guy? So the next one we went to was. Oh, a, yes. Was That's a, the goats. Yeah, what was that one called? Patches. Patches. The Patches Family Creamery, uh, established in 2009, so it's relatively new. It's in Lebanon, PA, and um, we drove up, and Tim was instantly entranced oh, with the goats. They had goat. baby goats. He wanted a goat, a donkey, and a pony because they had these animals there. They were really, really – you could walk right up to the fence. They were very gentle, and they had a nice building, very well run, Um and it was just, it was a good, it was a good dairy, uh, good the dairy winter, Right, creamery. the winner we liked there was peaches and cream, was the flavor we I, liked I'm there. not a peach fan. Bob would tell you this in a second flat. I, I, but that flavor, you know, really won the cake. And the other thing which we'll tell later on is we had vanilla at every place. So oh, we I wanted forget, to find yeah, we out what, to say we, that. Yeah, yeah, we wanted to find out what was the best vanilla, so we'll tell you that, because we thought that could be the kind of our... Um, you know, as a bellwether or as a, uh, a gauge... The v choosing vanilla was a really interesting choice because soft serve or or normal right, scoop, right. It, it they varied a lot. They really varied, they varied a lot. They varied a lot. You're so right. from there, we went to a place called Twilight Acres, which was actually not far from Patches. Hard to find at first, 
Um, and it was on, it's in Wommelsdorf, literally W O M E L S D O R F, Wommelsdorf, P A. Two Amish uh, young ladies ran, were at the, the counter. They were f- very sweet and very fun, and they had a donut case there. And, and Tim su- sarcastically says, when were these made, expecting them so to how say, old are these donuts? Like 7-Eleven, <laughs> last week, right? She said this morning, and one of them was a, a, a looked like a, a, like a jelly-filled donut, but it was filled with cream. And cinnamon, yeah, on the outside. We bought one. I, I would actually say that the donut even eclipsed the ice cream. Yeah, the donut was probably the best donut I've had in years, and I love a donut. <laughs> I said to John, it's the best donut. And Brian, for some reason, wanted to have one. But all of a sudden, you're going to count calories? I mean, we've been eating all He's th- scraping one of the styrofoam cups with the ice cream. He's like, We did have the cookies and cream ice cream there. Somebody recommended, which was, which was quite good. The, 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 the farm we talked about right before that, though, the one that was- um, Patches? The Patches family? No, the- um, Are we on Twilight? Yeah, we're I was Twilight. just going to mention the, the one flavor we thought was Mutella. That was the one that was Peridel. I just saw it on my notes here. Yeah. And the Mutella was made with, with Nutella. And that was an interesting... We, we tried to find different things at each place. John wasn't in love with that. No, and that place was the one, as I said, that was furthest off the beaten path for us. And not sure we would... It was on the thing. We had to do it, but... The other good thing with Twilight, and we found this in very few places, some oh. of the ice cream tasted icy sometimes. Yeah, too much like water. chips or something. The texture of this ice cream was was very rich and, and, and uh, quite nice. It was a great yeah. texture for ice cream. And we wrapped up the entire uh, day today, just about 50 minutes ago, uh, at Chester Springs Creamery at Milky Way Farm. Um, this was also fairly close to Philly in relation to the other ones, which are further out. I don't, um, we were, it's a cute, uh, here's the word, bucolic. You know, like you you, want, you go down a drive <laughs> and there's the farmland and there's the barns and the silos and there's a place where they sell the ice cream and the treats. All set up really great. But I, I have to just say, meh, you know, the ice cream yeah. was, we were like, eh, you know, by now we've had 11 before this, it was right. 11 other stops to gauge this one. By. We did have lavender ice cream there, which was good. I forgot that was the, the lavender, best one. The la- we that did was like the, the lavender. Lavender was good. Of course, good. Brian yeah. did another berry thing, which we could care less about, but the <laughs> lavender was, was quite good. The other thing that a lot of these places, and I think it was the weather, there was a lot of sad produce at a lot of these yeah. places, which yeah. I kept trying to get tomatoes, and a lot of the places had great fresh flowers, fresh cut flowers, or, or um, peaches and some sort uh-huh. of fruits and tomatoes, but... When I say it was sad, I think it was just it was so darn hot, and I think a oh, lot of the stuff things are was wilting. Just, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. tough. So, John, if I were to ask you then, of so of the, if I were to say, could you pick? Should we do? Can you pick your favorite from each day, or could you pick your just I could favorite def- overall? I could, I could do the following. I could pick in the following order: first, second, third. So, to I think well, today, let's, let's ask this first: what, who had the best vanilla of the twelve? I thought it was Lat, the first one we went to this morning, the Lat Family Farm. That one we described that was absolutely perfect. Now, I, I might be, you took notes on everything we I said. I did take notes on everything. <laughs> so, Keeping us honest, folks. Keeping so there, us well, honest. Well, there is, there is a difference then, because do you remember yesterday's vanilla? Yesterday's vanilla at um, uh, Coventry. Coventry. Which was, was our last stop, which we thought was the best, best that so, day. Yeah, that day, right. That was soft serve. The one at Lap was a was a regular scoop, scoop. Regular scoop, and so we would say the two best vanillas. And for soft serve, the best vanilla was definitely a Coventry, Coventry. and Pottstown. And for the um, scoop vanilla yeah. would be Lap, Lap Lap Valley Farm in New yeah. Holland. And it the texture of that ice cream, we we talked about it with Twilight with Twilight, but the texture of the ice cream and the and the quality of the ice cream at lap was if you get out that way and if you're a mint chocolate chip fan and bob had me sample mint chocolate chip yep. wherever we could mostly you see that ice cream is green yeah well the lap valley farm their mint chocolate chip looked like vanilla with chocolate chips in it and it tasted fantastic which tells me that either they're putting food coloring in the mint chocolate chip to make it look mint which it's not required i don't need to have the thing look green, green. It was fantastic, though. Lap Valley, across the board, I and, thought had some of the best stuff. Right, and we had vanilla there. We also had maple walnut. Oh. We had raspberry. And it's the only place in my notes where we all agreed that, hands down, no matter what it was, it was great. It was good. And we probably should have tried all 30 or 40 flavors, but it was Tim it was decided that they had, that there was a something they did with the ratio of cream. Yeah, I think there was a probably higher butter fat content or something in it. And, and or, not... Uh, 
ba winding back to what we said before about the physicality of the place, it's all one experience. Yeah. I mean, you're at this beautiful, pristine, clean, clean, clean dairy farm, and then you have this delicious ice cream. It was fantastic. Yeah, we can't emphasize how beautiful the grounds and the and the presentation now, was at LAP. I would say uh, that was number one. Number two for ice cream was Freddie Hill Farm. Right. And that was the very first dairy we went, we went to. That's where Tim met the owner, Nancy, and it was lemon cookie. It was a lemon cookie crunch, which was lemon ice cream, which is hard to find. I oh. always joke on the show about nobody makes orange ice cream, and I don't mean sherbet. So not lemon sherbet or orange sherbet, ice cream. but orange ice cream or lemon ice cream. And they made lemon ice cream, and they broke in it lemon uh, Oreos. And you know we love Oreos, but that – and actually it was – we couldn't believe how great it was, and it was the first ice cream we tasted of the tw of the twelve places we were going, and they got best of Philly for their chocolate rainforest crunch, which we also got, which we thought was quite good. And um, so Freddie Hill, I would agree with you that Freddie Hill, for me, was uh, was now. Also what would be another one style. of your top ones? So we all agreed on Freddie Hill, and we all agreed on um, Lap Valley. But what would be another one? And then I would say the. the um, for the authenticity, I would say for me probably Way Har. Yeah, Way Har was great, and yeah. uh, that's where we we had Jake and Morgan, and it, there there was a variety of flavor. Blueberry. It buckle. was very much a a home uh, home baked, homemade feel. Uh, it was um, friendly, and it just felt like you were in somewhere different. Some of the some of the places might have been as we well, mentioned so a little like, too like, commercial. Well, Tim, Tim would say under his breath, "We're in friendlies." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> some, friendlies or something. So, but I, you know, overall, if I was to say, if I was to do, if I was to recommend anybody do this trip, and I told them which ones to go to, which six to go to, um, obviously, this is just our opinion, and and some people may have other ideas, but um, I would say that for me, for distance, I will go again to Freddie Hill Farm yep. because and I will I'll go, go to up there and get the lemon. Yeah, and if I was to take a trip with somebody and say, hey, let's go out to, to the country, out to Lancaster County, I'd say let's go out to the dairy there. And I would go in the fall, and I would get eggs, and I would yep. get the butter and cream. Bring a cooler bring because a cooler. <laughs> if you're in a and it's a it's a beautiful area. Yeah, I in fact there were many times when we were in, at Lap Valley in that area going to the next one where I kept saying to the guys in the car like I could cycle out here. The beautiful roads, people you know, in buggies, horse and buggies, buggies, horse and wagons. So that one may as a destination yeah. that could be one where that that could be a central point. And then you go explore some of those other areas. And then Freddie Hill, for anybody that was, uh, for accessibility, if you were just yeah. coming down 95 and you said, uh, you wanted to try one of these on the Pennsylvania Ice Cream Trail, uh, for about 30 miles or so out of Philly or right off the turnpike, less than less than 30 miles, you can get up to Lansdale and uh, try some of that great ice cream and there. And play so, miniature golf. And play miniature <laughs> golf. So for me, it was for accessibility and reach was Freddie. Right. For probably the overall experience yes, and just Lap what I expected the trip to be would be Lap Valley would be my favorites. I agree that I think the vanilla, you picked them right. I think it was Coventry on the first day in Pottstown for soft serve. And, and Lap Valley. And Lap oh Valley. God. And if I said, what was your favorite ice cream overall? I might say the mint chocolate chip at Lap Valley. Really? Okay. Yeah. Although... I'm really torn because the lemon cookie, it's so rare to have actual, not as Tim said, not sherbet, yep. lemon ice cream. It was incredible. I would say for me it would be the lemon crunch, uh, the lemon cookie crunch at at Freddie Hill and the tea berry at Way Hard well, yeah, for me because I just, I could never find tea loves berry. Loves tea berry, yeah. And, um, and I would say I did like that vanilla soft serve at Coventry because- Yeah, that was good. It we was did really find, good. John mentioned it earlier, as as a as a standard to say let's just everybody does vanilla let's see who does it best we were a little bit surprised on how bland some of them were quite yeah. frankly and some some of them didn't have maybe as much as a bite as we thought or or had the full flavor and uh, so i hey, think we, it, our, it was our, a good our test. thing on the trip was briars <laughs> it's briars vanilla anyway i think we're out of time oh yeah okay yeah look at we didn't do bad so uh hey Thanks for tuning in this week. Thanks for coming with us on the Pursue Your Scoops road trip through uh, the Pennsylvania and these amazing dairies. There's 12 of them. You can visit the PA Tourism site to uh, check out the card. Pursue Your Scoops. It's a really cool thing. Thank you, Tim, for coming up with the trip. <laughs> Thank you for also mapping it. Mapping Did a great well. job. Oh, and before I forget, the navigation system on the all track works great. Oh, yeah, we forgot the whole thing. So yesterday <laughs> I, jo I joked with John about he was using his phone, and I said, why don't we just type it's in the navigation. navigation? It worked like a gem. It worked and like a charm. the minute I used it, 
he and Brian were super calm. They almost fell asleep because they thought the car was telling me what to do and well, where to was. go. Well, it was. And I wasn't it looking was down at my phone. I'm like, why doesn't your phone talk to you? I can't drive. Just, I'm just looking at it. I'm very old. You know, you think I'm new age, but I'm really old. So yeah. all track wagon performed beautifully, about 33 miles per gallon each day. And that's with three adult males and a 100 degree temperature and outside. And the air conditioner pumping. Yeah. It uh, was pumping. It, it was max air because it, it got hot out. All right. So thanks again to Tim. Thanks again for the mapping, for making this all happen. Uh, big thanks to Deep Discount. Uh, go to focusgroupradio.com. Click on the Deep Discount logo down on the right-hand side. Start shopping. Fill your basket. Usually get free shipping. And a very big thanks to VW of America um, for working with us for the last eight or nine years. It's almost nine. <laughs> it's scary. It's almost nine. Almost ten. But uh, the car performed beautifully. So uh, uh, as Tim likes to put it, on a long-range uh, test drive, long if, test you, drive. If, if you want to look at it that way, the cars are holding up beautifully, very happy with it, drives great. The fin finishes and great. And guess easy what? To, easy to connect the tech. It's tech great. And the built-in navigation works like a charm. Little did I know, a year and, a year and three quarters into the ownership of the vehicle. You're still discovering magic with the all track job. <laughs> all right. So everybody have a safe week. And don't text and drive. Arrive alive. It's the Focus Group with Tim Bennett and John Nash, formerly on Sirius XM Satellite Radio and now accessible on all platforms. Subscribe, like, and rate us on your platform of choice. Learn more at focusgroupradio.com.